stretch out here. I always grease my machine at lunchtime. Um, I say always, I usually do. Sometimes I'll grease it at the end of the day, but I always find it usually happens if I do it at lunchtime. If I wait till the end of the day, sometimes everybody's like, let's get out of here or we work late. get it done so anyway we got a concrete pump truck up here they're getting ready to pour some tears they've been drilling down in this hole got big uh, midwest foundation down there and it looks like it's going to be really hard digging down in that bottom but i don't know if i'm going to be the one down there or not need to get that rock bucket put together that Kenny sent me. I got that job and I got another one to uh, we'd probably use it on. But we, uh, they, they got quite a hole down there. This is the airport terminal at Will Rogers. Over here by the Delta Gate, it looks like. They're going to do an addition, looks like, on the uh, digging on a big hole. Seems like I've been here for 30 minutes, but well, an hour and a half. So whenever I'm digging uh, something like this with the big deep, uh, you call them steps or what we got, what I normally do is I try to establish my depth a little bit deep. Uh, well, I got a little bit deep there, but I try to establish the steps all the way down the grade, the bottom grade first. And the reason I do that, it helps to keep the layout. Uh, this is actually going to stop here at this uh, this next pier, which is right where this green paint's at. I think you can see that right there where my teeth are. That's where it's going to stop. So, so basically, I like to use my layout uh, to get everything. Uh, I dig the deepest grade first. It just makes it easier, I find, to do it uh, that way. Seems like if I try to dig the steps first, I lose track of everything. And the steps are not quite as important as the center part of the footing. Because what they're gonna do with the center part of the footing is pour concrete. The steps on each side, they're actually just gonna be uh, clearance space so they can get into work. And after they get done pouring these footings, they will actually fill that back up with dirt and compact it. So, that's why I do it this way. It's just, a, you know, it's just the way I like to do it. You could probably do it a different way and it would work, but um, I think everybody's kind of got a preference for how they do things. So this is just one of mine here, so. So we'll be digging this, uh, this grade up until I get to this pier and then we're going to change the elevation goes up back to what they I think it goes back to what we were at um, before we turned the corner there but I may uh, let the camera run a little bit to see if we can't uh, go through this process from start to finish on these steps here. The bottom step is eight inches up and that's for their, uh, they've got what they call a carton form or a, con a cardboard box form that they put in the bottom. It's a crush, uh, what 
whatever they call that. It allows, it allows for the dirt to uh, push up without pushing or lifting the, f the foundation of the building. So. And then two feet over, uh, that's just clearing space. And then we're going up to, uh, oh, basically I kind of split the difference between the top and the bottom. Just for the safety of the workers. We don't want that to be... Uh, we don't want anything over four feet high that they're standing next to. So that's just a kind of a safety shelf or a bench. The great guys reminded me that I got a step here. That's a good thing. Sometimes those things get forgotten and yeah, it's not fun to fix those problems. But right now I'm establishing the other side of a four foot wide ditch. I'm gonna take it down to grade. And then we will jump on over and start doing some benches or steps. Hopefully I got my grade corrected there. I think we're up a little bit better. We got dirt blocking the laser. It says we're good there. Okay, now we've got that established. Uh, we're four foot wide bottom. Now we'll jump over here and do a, I'm gonna clean this out just to pass here jump over and start down a shelf on our bench. Cabinet work, as Laura Morelli would like to say. Looks like I might be shy just a little bit on that. We're going to dig this step for this uh, we're going to dig these shelves up here to the uh, same mark where we're changing elevations and then we're, we're just going to do this stop right there, I believe. Um, I didn't get any instructions otherwise, so we'll just, what I'm doing here is just trying to take about a two foot wide cut. This is a 30 inch bucket, so I just gauge off of the teeth. Um, that one's about six inches to the center to the edge. So, this kind of makes it easy to gauge uh, about how wide you are there. Teeth are about six inches apart, so if you go two teeth, that's, uh, well, the first tooth is zero, but the second tooth would be six, and the third a foot. So on, so. Always dig from top to bottom, it doesn't matter what you're digging. I, and, uh, it's just a good habit to have. You will you'll do you'll do less damage to pipes, you'll do less damage to your equipment. Um, less damage to yourself, I think. I mean it's easier for the operator to take It's easier for the operator and the machine if you take a nice steady cut the machine can handle and you don't stall the machine out, you're not fighting with the levers. Um, you know, you don't realize how much you can sit there and fight with these machines. It's best if you can just go with it, uh, get a good steady flow going. Doesn't always work. You get into rock and that kind of stuff. You can't, you can't make steady cuts like that. But when you can, you should. We're almost down to our. I can't remember. It might be six inch mark. It's either six or eight inches. I may have to back up a little bit there. Uh, I'm making a. 
fairly long cut, so you, you know, if you make a long cut, you don't have to take quite as much dirt to get a full bucket every time you make a pass. Uh, in my opinion, as long as your bucket's moving, you're making better progress than when your bucket stalls out and you're sitting there trying to cram it full of dirt. I just don't, I don't agree with that logic or any of that. I mean, uh, these machines are designed to make a cut. Fix it. 
sometimes you gotta do a little tilt, let that tooth dig in a little bit. Saw cut. 
it kind of ends up looking like a saw cut. You got saw marks or teeth marks. But it, it's effective for cutting dirt straight up and down. And if you want, you can kind of come back through and smooth it out after you get it kind of cut where you want it. And when I get back in the middle, I'm going to line up on the layout. Make sure that I'm continuing that bottom cut to the, to the layout that I still got at the top, which I still got one side. So that's how I keep everything straight and neat. At least that's the best way I know how to do that. So now you know just as much as I do about how to dig this type of ditch. I hope that helps you out. secrets, not any mysteries, nothing's magic. Basically it takes time, it takes patience, it takes uh, machine control. And once you get that down, it's all pretty easy. We've got a pier right there. I don't know that this one has any steel coming out of the top of it. Doesn't feel like it. playing around there, I'm going to move the stockpile a little bit. Um, now even though this footing steps up, it's going to continue in a straight line right here, so I'm fixing it. What I'm going to do next is, after I kind of clean this up a little, I'm going to start making a cut into this next elevation. And the reason I'm going to do that is because it gives me a better visibility of the bottom of that ditch. So we'll go ahead and start making a little cut right here. It ain't gonna be very it ain't gonna be very deep at first. Cut, cut your ditches from bottom or top to bottom, never dig bottom to top. 